This is the world's first Wi-Fi 7 router in the market and it comes with LED screen. Let's check out the review. Alright, this is TP-Link's new Archer BE800, also called BE19000 Tri-Band Wi-Fi 7 router. So in this video, we are going to find out whether you should upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 router from your existing Wi-Fi 6 or even Wi-Fi 6E routers. So let's first do a quick unboxing. The Wi-Fi 7 router comes with outstanding packaging. It comes with some quick start guides, power adapter, and an ethernet cable. Now let's look at the specs. Interestingly, TP-Link never disclosed the exact CPU and RAM information of the Wi-Fi 7 router, which is strange, but only mentioned quad-core CPU is powering the Wi-Fi 7 router. But the rest of the specs are, it's a tri-band router, can cover up to 2500 square feet with a single router, it can also be configured in the mesh configuration if you have two units, it can provide up to 19 gigabits per second of wireless bandwidth, and falling is a breakdown. 6G supports 11,520 megabits per second and 5G band can support up to 5,760 megabits per second and 2.4G band supports up to 1,376 megabits per second. And there are 8 internal antennas, beam forming, 320 megahertz channel width, MLO, 4x4 MU-MMO, FEM, OFDMA, DFS, 12 streams and can connect up to 100 devices. In the ports option, we have one 10 gig LAN WAN port, one 10 gig SFP plus RJ45 combo LAN WAN port, four 2.5 gig LAN ports, one USB 3 port, and TP-Link is no longer offering one gig ports, which is a big plus in my opinion. On the front, we have a nice LED screen, which can be configured and customized with available 3000 plus graphics. There's also a WPS button and on and off LED button. Overall, the build quality is top notch and I really like the case design. It is easy to integrate into any home environment and plenty of ventilations helps the system to stay cool under performance. Now let's do some performance coverage and speed test. So we place the Wi-Fi 7 router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test we're using Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card since there is no Wi-Fi 7 capable adapters for clients machines available in the market at the time of this review. So please keep that in mind because it could limit the full potential of the Wi-Fi 7 router or mesh units. We are also using 10 gig Ethernet wired computer as an iPod 3 server. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. We tested connections in extreme corners in each floor of the house. We used only 5G and 6G connections and ran tests 3 times at each location to get the best possible results. So let's review the results. First location, which is within the 5 feet of the router in the basement, we achieved 1.3 gig Wi-Fi speed for 5G and 1.39 gig for 6G, which is the highest Wi-Fi speeds we ever achieved for this test. Excellent start. For the next test, we moved all the way to the left in the basement and here we achieved 501 megabits per second for 5G and 430 megabits per second for 6G. So as expected, 6G has even less range compared to 5G. But overall, results are not impressive compared to the previous Wi-Fi 6 router results at the same location. Next, moving on to the main floor to the left side of the house, we achieved only 60 megabits per second for 5G and we could not connect to 6G at all, which was disappointing for new Wi-Fi 7 router compared to previous Wi-Fi 6E routers. Moving on to the right side, we achieved 205 megabits per second for 5G and 215 megabits per second for 6G, which again, not the best scores. Moving on to the first floor, on the right side, we achieved 351 megabits per second for 5G and 327 megabits per second for 6G. And moving on to the left side, we achieved 20 megabits per second for 5G and again, we could not find 6G signals here, which was kind of disappointing. And moving on to the garage, we achieved approximately 6 megabits per second for 5G and again, no 6G signals here, which is kind of comparable to the previous single Wi-Fi routers we have tested. In the next test, we are using 10 GB NAS connected to 10 GB network port of the Wi-Fi 7 router and using Wi-Fi 6E card based laptop connected to 6G and 5G at 2.4 gigabits per second speed, we ran a file transfer speed test using 5 GB file. As you can see, 10 gig network card is a big upgrade and we were able to saturate the 2.4 gigabits per second wireless speed and achieve 200 megabits per second wireless transfer speed for both 6G and 5G bands, which is amazing. 
Then we use the 2.5 gig Ethernet port network connection of the router and connect it to the same 10 gig NAS and using both 5G and 6G connected at 2.4 gigabits per second to transfer the same 5GB file and again we achieve 200 megabits per second wireless transfer speed. So 2.4 gigabits per second wireless speed is a limiting factor here. Either you use 10 gig Ethernet port or 2.5 gig Ethernet port or even use two 2.5 gig Ethernet ports and combine them by enabling link aggregation with LACP or static lag to achieve 5 gig Ethernet connection. But these extra bandwidth options will shine when you have Ethernet connected device instead of wireless clients. But the good thing is if you have a faster NAS, it can utilize the full speed of 2.5 gigabits per second bandwidth. In the final test, we used USB 3 flash drive shared as a file server on the Wi-Fi 7 router. The TP-Link USB share will show up as a media shared device. So if you want to use your Wi-Fi 7 router as a NAS, all you have to do is connect a USB storage and enable file sharing. The BE19000 performance was average, scoring 54 megabits per second read and write score, which is not bad for USB flash drive. Now let's talk about setting up Wi-Fi 7 router. Setup was a very easy three-step process. All you have to do is download the TP-Link app in your Android or iOS device, connect your router to your modem, or if you have Fios with Ethernet connection, you can connect the router's WAN port directly to your Ethernet cable and you don't need a modem. Then just follow the instructions in the app to complete the setup. There are a ton of settings available to configure. You can also use the TP-Link's web-based configuration to manage router familiar configuration options. Also, the router's all 10 gig ports or any 2.5 gig port can be configured as a WAN port during the setup process. It is definitely gamers and professionals dream come true and also allows parents to use extensive parental control to keep an eye on their kids and block malware websites with built-in securities. Moving on to the wireless settings, you can modify wireless band settings separately as well as keep separate SSIDs for each band and multiple channel selections. You can enable MLO settings for Wi-Fi 7 devices as they become available in the future to have better Wi-Fi experience. HomeShield will provide network protection and do network performance scans. You have an option to do parental control, QoS, IoT and there's a 30-day tether trial. The LED screen display will let you choose multiple display modes, create your own emojis, animated, or leave words on the screen. In the advanced settings, there are a ton of options to choose, which are usually standard options for all TP-Link wireless routers. That includes VPN server client options and BE19000 Wi-Fi 7 supports easy mesh option to connect multiple Wi-Fi 7 or TP-Link mesh capable routers to create one big mesh network to cover bigger square footage. Let's do the final summary. TP-Link Archer BE800 BE19000 tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router did perform okay in this review. The Wi-Fi 7 router offers fastest speed within the 5 feet radius, but that speed took a major hit as distance increases compared to the previous gen Wi-Fi 6E routers. I would give it some slack because we don't have any Wi-Fi 7 adapter available in the market for client machines for testing. But not to mention plenty of devices are still only using Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 and not even Wi-Fi 6E in some scenarios. So the results might change when we have Wi-Fi 7 adapters available for testing. But even then, we have seen better overall speeds for Wi-Fi 6E routers compared to Wi-Fi 7 in the past for both 6G and 5G bands especially at first and second floor of the house and sadly in some cases 6G won't even connect whereas some previous gen Wi-Fi 6E routers were able to connect even at low speeds. Overall, Wi-Fi 7 router did not provide the best Wi-Fi coverage and was struggling to cover even 3000 square feet with 6G band and even 5G band did not produce the best Wi-Fi numbers. Having said that, the ever-increasing price tag, $599 to be exact in this case, for single tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router, not even a quad band currently do not justify the upgrade from Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 6 routers in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think of the review in the comments below. If you, if you like this video, please like and sub to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.